Hello, can you hear me? Hi everyone, I'm just um, trying to help somebody get into the meeting who's getting a strange message, so I'll be with you in a jiff. Um, has anyone else been watching the tennis and frustrated that they now have to turn it off? <laughs> this is turning out to be an extremely long Wimbledon match. Um, right. Why can't I unmute that? Jackie. Um, Jackie, I've sent you a message to start your video. Hopefully that will work. Uh, likewise, iPad 5. Oh, there we go. You've got it. Jan's on your way in. Right, mute. Hi, Jackie. Hi, so good evening. Jan's on her way in. Um. Oh, my neighbours have been very noisy. Uh, sorry, just waiting for one person who's trying to get in. Um, I've had two two people who have said that they can't come this evening. Um, who are going to come tomorrow? Uh, Valerie's still sick, and I just bet Madison's watching the tennis. <laughs> Or the cricket. It's all very nail biting here in England at the moment because it's the men's final at Wimbledon. And uh, they're into the fifth match and they're already up to 12 games each, I think. So it's going on and on and on. And I think uh, New Zealand versus England is still happening at Lord's Cricket Ground in the final of that. So it's all slow. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne's just sent a message. I said, are you getting there? She's written, slow as my mother. Right. Hopefully she's on her way. I think I can drop that down. Now, just while we're waiting for her to come, there are some uh, little there's some little things that you can do on here. Um, in case you haven't m noticed, um, 
along the bottom you've got some um, different bits and bobs. Uh, one is that there's a chat uh, icon. You can all hear me, can't you? Nod. Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay. Um, uh, so there's a chat icon. If you click on that, you can leave a message either just to me um, or to everybody. Um, we'll just see if she makes it in. Phone, somebody's on your iPhone. It might be Suzanne. Um, Pat, is that you on iPad 5? I can't hear you. Say Where that all again. Okay, uh, I think. Yeah, I'm, you hear me now? Do you hear me? Is it you, Pat, on iPad 5? Yes, it no. is. Oh, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, got you. Yeah, I'll just turn you off again. And Suzanne, is that you on the iPhone? I think it's me, Kelly. Oh, Kelly. Oh, hello. <laughs> Am I Charlie good? Um, so you should be able to turn on. I'm sending you a message to say, ask to start video. You don't have to be on video. There, oh, there you go. Hello, oh, no, got you. And Jan's said she'll come on video later. It's whatever that means. Perhaps she just got out of bed. We're still waiting for one other person to come. So. So, um, Pat Kelly, you didn't come last week, did you? No, I couldn't find, figure out the time zones. That was me. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And um, Lyndon, up in the top left corner. Hello, you're new to us too. Hi. Hi. Um, we'll just give it one more minute and I'll just see if I can. Where's my phone? Shall I message you on there? That might be quicker. writing expletives now in her message to me. Um, what's happening? Sorry about the delay. I do I do want to try and get people in if they're trying to get in. Um, and uh, Suzanne also didn't get there last week. Um, Trying to sign in with Facebook. No, 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 you don't need to do that. Hang on, let me just call her. This will be quicker. Uh, Hi, Suzanne, I just thought I'd call you because it'll be quicker this way. Um, you don't have to sign in with Facebook. You should be able to just open Zoom. Um, if you should, if you just click on zoom.us and uh, somewhere um, along the menu bar on Zoom, there's a, a link that says join a meeting. And when, and when you click on that, put that number in and that should work. Is that happening? I'm trying. I don't mean to hold you up. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. I um, mean, I'd rather that you got in. Um, uh, because you, especially because you went there last week, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep trying and I'll, I'll get in there as soon as I can. <laughs> okay. The other thing would be to try on your phone. So if you, if you go to your app store and download the Zoom app. Um, okay. Let me try that. 
uh, phones work really well with Zoom, and then and do the, then go through the same process. Okay. Alternatively, go back go. to the um, go back to the um, right the course group on Facebook uh, where the link is, and click on the link. But make you might have been trying to click on the link for tomorrow night instead of the one for, uh, to, tomorrow morning instead of the one for now, which is why you would have got the message saying another meeting's in progress because this is the meeting that's in progress. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, so um, second meeting. So am I logging in? Okay. The second meeting is the one that I should be on. No. No, the second meeting was the alternative meeting for the one um, New Zealander who's in the meeting because this, otherwise it's a, not a good time. Um, so the meeting, the, the meeting, the, the, the link that you should be on will have the same numbers as those numbers that I've just given you. Yes, it does. Okay, so click on that one. That should get you in here. Got it? Okay. It says launching. Yeah, that's good. Launching is good. I'm going to wait for it to launch. <laughs> it won't take long to launch. And then you'll get um, a little green box that says um, join the meeting via um, audio or something like that. Okay. Just click on the green box. Uh, anyway, you'll pop, you should pop up here in a minute, hopefully. Okay. See you in a bit. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Cool. Right. So while we're waiting, I'm just going to ask um, the new people to just uh, tell us just a couple of things. Lyndon, I'm going to start with you. Can you, uh, oh, hang on, let me unmute you. Um, Tell us, where, what, what, is there anything in particular that you're actually writing at the moment or uh, wanting to write? Uh, I'm wanting to write um, actually a couple of things. Uh, and one thing I would like to ask your advice about is how to actually keep a focus when you have more than one thing in your head sometimes that you think you All might write right about yeah indeed. I, have, I, I have um uh some ideas for a kind of um historical novel study in my one that's perhaps the most uppermost at the moment sure and um but i've joined this course and it's nice to say see you and say hello to everybody <laughs> as a way of actually tr trying to get myself to focus and really get moving and move from an ideas phase to actually an output sure. phase. Sure, we're going to talk a little bit about that today actually because that was a, a common kind of a, a thing that people came up with last week um, mm -hmm. when we were um, just checking that we're recording, yes, when we were just uh, starting off I wanted to ask everyone what were their main things so that, w that was quite common was uh, staying focused and being in the flow and creating a habit and sticking with it and all that kind of thing, which is what we're going to talk about today. In terms of focusing on one thing when you've got lots of different ideas, um, that's, that, that's a lot of writers. Um, and, uh, you know, you get ideas come to you for other things. I have a huge folder on my computer um, that has, it has a different folder in it for every new idea. Um, there's one folder that's got all kinds of just lots of different random things, but main ideas are, oh, this must be Suzanne joining us now. Great. Must be when you come on an iPad or an iPhone, it doesn't give you the option to um, put your name in. That's interesting. Um, so if I get an idea about a different story from the one that I'm writing or the whatever it is that I'm working on, I go and I write that as soon as I think, I mean, you've got to write everything down, especially at our age. I'll just say us, our age. Generally, we're all, you know, in that age where if we don't write it down, we're not going to remember it. So you must. Um, and I use my computer for recording all of that. I have all kinds of notebooks and pieces of paper as well, but I put everything into the computer. Um, and then 
So long as I get that out of my head straight away onto a piece of paper somewhere where I know it's safe. Um, oh, and Tanya's here too. Wow, it's, it's, we're having a real party today. Um, uh, then I have, then I focus back on the thing that I'm focusing on. Um, I do find it um, challenging to focus on more than one um, book at, at a time, um, and, which, and, but although sometimes I am focusing on more than one at a time. Um, but when it comes down to the real final stages where you're really hammering it out and coming to grips with it and edit, editing and da 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 da, then you've really just got to stay focused on the one. Um, and in fact, at the beginning, you've really got to stay focused on the one too, because otherwise you don't get it written. And you have to feel that sense of, um, you know, you feel more encouraged the more you've got written down. So try and just, just stick with one and get those other ideas out. Make sure they're recorded somewhere, but get them out of your head as quickly as you can. Yeah. Does that kind of answer your question? Yes. It does. Yeah. Do you, okay. you, you mentioned it. I did watch the uh, last uh, the, the video you did, although I come in late. And um, you were saying that, you know, you, you worked best when your first book, when you were, in a sitting in a cafe. Um, yes. Do you, do you always work now in one place and on sort of one computer, or do you move around on different machines and different places? Um, I just work on my laptop now. Um, I haven't written fiction for a while. I mean, my real goal is to get back to that, but a whole lot of non-fiction uh, kind of got sort of in the way, so to speak. Um, and I certainly uh, find it um, I find it very straightforward writing straight onto the computer with nonfiction. Um, with fiction, when I wrote my my novel, I was um, I used both methods of handwriting and on my laptop. Uh, and and the second novel that um, is partly written has been been written um, in that same combination. Um, and I'm not sure when I go back to it now because I'm so comfortable on my laptop now whether I will be doing much handwriting. Um, there's a different, it's, it engages a different part of your brain somehow when you've got a pen in your hand. Uh, and certainly if I'm writing out, planning things and thinking about things, I often have to use a pen and paper to do that. Um, so it's whatever works for you. Ultimately, you've got to try and get it onto into a Word document and, and onto a computer. Yeah. But sometimes the, the really creative part, you have to be, you might find you have to handwrite. It depends how your brain works. Hmm. Yeah. Whatever works. Right. What, whatever works is what works, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Great. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Oh, they've finally finished. I can turn it off. Hang on, just two seconds. I just has anyone else got it on? <laughs> I don't know who's actually won. Yes, I finally. <laughs> this is Jan, and yes, it's Who over. Won? Who Djokovic. won? Djokovic won. Yeah. Oh, right. I just. I, I've got Not thrilled. Game, obviously. Well, that was an amazing game. Anyway, right. <laughs> Back to, back to the real world. Um, so, Suzanne, if we, can we get a video of you? And, and Jan, you're not giving us a video. We'll see. I, I was distracted by tennis, so no video this week. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> I thought great. this was going to just be us looking at you and listening mostly. So that's my well, plan. Okay, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, but I did miss last week, so I, I didn't know the format. Sure. sure. No, that's okay. Um, I mean, it, it's up to you whether you want to be on the screen or not. It's quite nice for me to see you. Um, I know, and I be, I'll give you a glimpse, and then I'm going to go <laughs> off. I, I'm not going to be sitting in one place. How's that? That's okay. That's out. fine. It's not going to be distracting for me, because in a moment, we're actually going to go, well, I'm going to share my screen with you, and we're going to be looking at a PowerPoint. Um, so um, because you weren't here last week either, and also um, Kelly, um, 
I want to ask you these same questions that I asked um, Lyndon. What are you writing or wanting to write? And what are the big issues for you? So um, Suzanne, do you want to start with that? Um, <clears throat> sure, can you hear me? Yeah. And don't look at me because I didn't know I was going to be on video. So <laughs> this is my question here. Um, I gorgeous. am on a memoir, basically. Yep. I'm a, I'm a little stuck right now because I think I need to jump ahead. I need to jump out of sequence based on some things that are happening now that are really fresh um, and I need to capture them while I'm in the moment. And I know what you told me, write the story and then try and keep the emotion out of it. Um, so for me, it's just the discipline of sitting down and getting back at it. I think when you're writing um, a memoir, and I think I probably said this to you and I've said it to a few others, and, and some of you are writing something that's memoir-like, and if you're not, we always, anyway, often are calling upon our own experiences um, that we put into our writing. There's, there's two parts to this. One is to, um, w one is to get the words down on paper, and then it's to write um, the, the book. And, and it's kind of like that with lots of different books, actually, but it's particularly like it with memoir because there's so much of our own emotion tied up in it. So we've got to get that out, um, and that's telling our story. But depending on what it is that you're... A lot of people are writing a memoir that's fiction. So if you're writing your personal memoir and it's, and it's really and truly about you, you can leave a lot of things in. If you're wanting to write a fiction that's a memoir, so you're actually turning it into a story, you've got to take a lot of your own stuff out and turn it into something that other people um, want to read. And the, the, there's, a, there's a different process there. There's a different type of content. Um, so, yeah, get it out and then mould it. Yeah, it's really important, that process of just getting it out and getting it on the paper. And it, it is the hardest part. And then the other hardest part's writing it. <laughs> None of it's easy. Yeah. Okay. And um, Kelly, what's what are you writing? Oh, I thought I'd hang on. Sorry, I thought I'd unmuted you. Sorry, say that again. Got you now. That I published a book about working with uh, indigenous people in, in adult learning and I published it. And what came out of it was an intensely personal experience that I'm trying to make into, I think, a novel. And I'm not sure how to make that work. That sounds and amazing. Yeah, it does. And I'm just kind of lost. I. I wrote a, a novel a while ago that was just a romance novel because I thought I don't even have a clue and I read a bunch of books and did that kind of stuff and even submitted it to a publisher who was very kind and sent me a long letter saying that, you know, after they kept it for about six months that it wasn't quite appropriate for us and whatever, but it, it was a good process and now I'm kind of stuck on this trying to figure out how to make what I learned there work in this this personal kind of novel and i'm stuck so that's right. why i'm to get unstuck right okay well it may if you're writing something that's a bit different from what you wrote last time sometimes the rules kind of shift um but uh so when you say stuck are you stuck in terms of um getting it out and onto paper? Are you stuck in terms, because you've got kind of caught up in your head with how you should write it, so it's holding you up from actually writing it? Yes, that's the last that, part. Yeah, that's where yeah, I'm, yeah. That's, okay, so forget what you got told and just write it. So the, it's the same kind of thing again. Now, another writer and editor may give you completely different advice from this, but in my opinion, You've got to get it out first and then mould it, okay? So I, I always say with my novel, it took me four months to write the novel from the beginning to the end of the story, right? Then it took me a year to 
write it in this that second part of writing it do you, know, do you know what i mean so i got the story out and then i wrote it and they were different um stages they were completely different phases and the second was much bigger than the first and really yeah 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 it's going to be a process <laughs> it is most definitely a process yeah this is one of the biggest things you'll ever do, and especially writing a novel. I, I think it's one of the hardest things to do. It's not easy, especially if you're really determined to do it well. It's hard work. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, come, we'll talk like, again. <laughs> I feel like I'm tripping over myself trying to tell the story. Right. Okay, so you need to get out of your own way. Yep. Yeah, and let the story tell it, tell the story. Yeah. You, you be the conduit. So that's actually, now that's actually kind of a nice way of thinking about it when I think about the process of writing my novel. When you're telling the story, it's kind of like I often had the experience that it was telling itself. I was just some kind of a conduit. I, I often talk about how I had this one experience when I was, again, sitting in a cafe and a whole character appeared on the page in front of me who was not part of my plan. And that's, mm -hmm. you have these experiences sometimes, especially in writing fiction, where, and, and a lot of other kinds of art forms, you know, any of you who've painted or written poetry or you musicians, you have this experience, you can have this experience where you feel like you're telling something that's coming from somewhere else. So that is the first part of the process. The second part, you're doing the work. You are totally the one doing the work. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So the, it's again, it's kind of little bit different parts of the brain as well. It's, you know, it's a bit left and right. Yeah. So I think be the conduit, get out of your own way, let the story be told, and then sort it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and uh, Jan, what are you? Um, what are you writing? Hey, hello. Um, actually, hey, hello. I've never used the word memoir, but maybe it's along that line. It's it's a personal, you know, more life story kind of approach. Um, this book has been in my head developing for probably eight years. Mm -hmm. And I've read somewhere that, you know, once you start, there's nothing you can do but finish it, right? You got to just move yeah. forward. And I actually, you know, I, I find myself telling the stories personally, verbally to people, kind of getting reactions and things. So I've I have almost these folders in my head, but mm -hmm. what I want is, you know, the instruction guidance from you to say, even for starters, what to uh, use Word or what publisher, what, you know, mechanism, sure. and then just a structure, you know, to how to, again, I, I'm writing a lot of things down, so I have pen and paper notes, but um, really the way, like you said, put it all together and then later embellish and you know finish it once you get all the sure. chapters done i guess yeah so um definitely please use word to, um if you don't have word i know it's not the cheapest thing to buy um i do have it i just wondered if there was something better oh no no definitely word everyone will ask you for word i mean it, you know if you send me something in a pdf i can't there's not i can't do anything with it except read it right. you know um, so, uh, and I know people that have Apple, Apples and um, so on, they use pages, but you need to get, um, you still need to get word for Apple. Office um, 365 is pretty affordable. So yeah, that's, that's easy. Yeah. Okay. There is, an, there's another thing that somebody um, sent me something in earlier this year and eventually I figured out that I could uh, it was a free program that I could download and I could copy it and paste it into Word and that worked okay. I can't remember what that was. But does 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 anybody not have Word? Oh, I have Word. Everyone's got Word? Microsoft Word? Yeah, good. Okay, that's great then. Cool. Um, so, and in terms of, so I think one of the things you're talking about there, Jan, is um, a kind of structuring and beginning the process of your book. Um, so what I might do, that's definitely uh, on the list of things to cover. 
Um, so, uh, and I think that probably we might we might bring that up closer because I think that's probably also where a lot of people are at um, is the process of structure. What I want to talk about today, uh, and and if it, I'll I'll be really honest here, and if it wasn't for the tennis, I would have read my notes through more times than I have. Okay. But who knew it was going to go on for so long? But anyway, so um, what I'm going to do now is share my screen uh, and open my PowerPoint and go through my notes. So what we're going to look at today, I don't even know if I've got these around the right way. Yes, I have. Um, we're going to be looking at um, uh, this area of um, purpose and writing and your call to purpose and what are the things that get in the way of that and and um, setting good writing habits so we're going we're going really big picture now and philosophical in a way um, in, in order to kind of come into the, the detail last week we were very much uh, on the detail so uh, screen so I'm sharing my screen and uh, you can, can you all see my fox? Mm. Good eye. And can I reduce that? I can reduce that. And open my PowerPoint. Good, good, good. Um, from beginning. Okay. So, um, what we're going to be talking about is making sure that your writing actually happens. <laughs> Who? Well, I can't see you all now, so I'm going to assume that everybody has a bit of a difficulty with making sure writing happens. Um, everybody has a bit of difficulty in, in, in making... Um, God, I've lost my voice this evening. Every, what you know what I'm trying to say anyway okay <laughs> next one so now can everybody see there I am gonna actually put this back up again okay can I see that um, if can you see on your um, on on your screen you've each got a little microphone down in the bottom corner of your screen by your name. Yeah. Yeah, Tanya can see it. She's nodding. Everybody's got a little microphone. It should be in the bottom left of your picture of yourself. Oh, you can't because I've got my, um, oh, I see, because I've got... Okay, I see me... it. I'm just keeping mine muted. Is that good? Yeah, no. So keep it muted. But now what I want you to do is, um, and you don't all have to answer this question, but I want you to have a think about this question and, and maybe two or three people might want to answer it. What is this desire to write all about for you? I really want you to think about this. Okay, so we're going right up to the kind of, mega picture of, of, your, of you as a writer. What is your desire to write all about? Someone got an answer for that? If you have, unmute yourself. And you can unmute yourself by putting your uh, mouse or, or whatever over the, either over the little microphone or when you put your mouse over your picture, you've got um, a blue box that says unmute, so you can unmute and speak. Can you? The only me? reason we've got them all on. Hi, Tanya. We've just got them all on so we don't get lots of, um, you know, noise. Tanya. So, can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's about wanting to share and assist people in transition. I'm not writing a novel, I'm writing um, a not self-help because what comes with that is very self. This would be a program that would be provided by um, parole officers or social workers or other people in the field to work with people in transition. 
So it's more of like a handbook um, that would help people. Right. For me, it's very important having worked in the field, I see the huge gaps that are not addressed, which is people going through transition. And the big, use an example of someone coming out of prison, there are some services that are set up that are very physical, their housing, their jobs, but there's the psychological part of it is not set up. And I'm very passionate about trying to put together something that will help people transition. Sure. Okay. And I, I use the prison one because that's very extreme, but I think the steps are, I, I believe the steps are very sa- the same, whether you're coming out of prison into society or if you're coming out of a marriage and becoming single, or I think that those, that those internal processes are very similar. So okay. That's yep. Where, that's what I'm trying to do. And that's what it's, it's a, it's a compulsion in me. Right. Something that's, yeah. I think it's about creating connection. When we write, we're speaking a truth, possibly our truth, and we're putting it on paper so that somebody else can say, yeah, I get that, or yeah, I see that, or, or enjoying a story or whatever. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a form of conversation with other people. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's about, for me, it's about being authentic in that conversation. That's my person. Okay. Anyone else? I think for me, um, it's Suzanne. I think from, can you hear me? Yep. I have wanted to write and I have written in one form or fashion since I was in third grade. Um, It's the one thing that I think I was born to do. Um, Unfortunately or fortunately, I also write for a living. So I think sometimes writing all day for work, you know, I get home and it's harder to switch gears and and get into that, into that personal voice. But for me, I really, I believe that some of my life experiences have value and maybe egotistically or, or whatever, I think they would be of value to others. And so, you know, I want to leave something in this world. I want to make a difference. And I want my writing to actually touch somebody deeply. If mm-hmm. only one person would be good enough. Yeah. I prefer to touch millions, but you know. <laughs> sure, we would all love to do that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I think for me, it's along those same lines. Um, I've never written and I'm not even particularly a reader, but um, just some of the experiences I've had in my life have forced me to absolutely always see the good in any situation. And I mean, any situation, there's something there that you can grab onto. So through the stories, that would be my goal is to kind of to that end. And and the truth of it is, if I could have a wildly, absolutely wildly successful book and not be known I'd be anonymous that would be even better mm-hmm. I tr- would want it to be that way mm-hmm. so, so that's it cool pet about yes. validation too and sorry say that again it's about validation can you hear me yeah your validation my validation and my experience is not that unique, even though I feel it is. I'm sure yeah. a lot of other people can relate to it. What is unique is the way that I tell it and the circumstances. Yeah. And I agree with pretty much everything that's been said before, but it's a compulsion. Even if yeah. I don't every day, it's in my head and yeah. I'm thinking about it. And I've got to get it out. Otherwise, you know, I'm not being true to myself. Yeah. So it's a story 
that has to be told that you feel compelled to tell um, and and it's about sharing something that's your truth, your authenticity um, and, and building that, uh, creating some connection in the world with other people who you may not even know, you, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. One of the things I said last week, and those of you who were here will remember, because there's, I think, at least three of you who are new this week, I'll, I'll mention it again. One of the things that I, I, I um, uh, one of the stories I like to tell is, imagine that you're cleaning out your attic and you find um, a treasured journal that was written by your great-great-grandmother. And in that story, in that journal, your great-great-grandmother talks about... Um, uh, problems that she's had in her life. She just talks about her life and the things that you can relate to. And imagine finding that and reading it. Maybe she wanted to be an artist and um, and her parents didn't think that was a, a good idea. Or or maybe she wanted to maybe she wanted something that she couldn't have and, and you felt that same kind of thing. And imagine reading that and you feel such a connection to this um, ancestor of yours uh, and, and it's incredibly um, validating to you as a human being to have that connection with someone who's, who you don't know but who is your um, ancestor. Um, and I've had an experience um, like that and it's so powerful because if especially if you've always been the black sheep in your family you no longer feel like you're the only one and it's a wonderful experience now imagine in a um, hundred years time um, a young woman is cleaning out her attic and she finds your story and she and that has that effect on her head I can see your legs now I think <laughs> um, and so uh, this completely distracted me. <laughs> well, I'm trying to find everybody's picture. I, I lost everybody. I just see yours. That's right. I'm just going to move mine down so I can't see your legs. <laughs> but <laughs> imagine the impact that you then have on someone that you don't even know, who is your great, great granddaughter, uh, who's found your story. And you've had this, and you've had that impact on someone who was the child of your child of your child of your exactly. child. You know, um, I've met, I've met several relatives through photo albums when yeah. I was a teenager, and it was just striking how stunned I was, not only at the physical similarity, but at the the lack of understanding and the lack of words that were provided to explain to me what happened to them and mm. it's kind of been a, a mission of mine to develop it through my writing so that my daughter my son and my granddaughters will be able to understand whenever they're ready to read it um sure like yeah so I guess the next question is, having answered that, and you have all said a similar thing, so there's a little bit of a follow-on from that, which is, what is the reward then? So what you've talked about is, um, um, what I've asked you to talk about now is what happens for you when you write. So you've talked about your compulsion and, and the need to tell your story. What is the reward when you've done that? Or, or imagine that you've done that, or you, or you already have done that. What is the reward that comes to you from having um, done this thing that you've been compelled to do? Now, my absolute, yeah, go. I was going to say my favorite quote of all time is from Dorothy Parker, who said, "The best thing about writing is having written." Um, because it's a pretty agonizing process, but the reward is I'm like, you know, if I finish a chapter and I feel really good about it, or even a page, it, it changes my brain chemistry for the rest of the day in ways that nothing else yeah. does. Yeah. Because it's like I've, it feels like I've put something, a little bit more of me comes out every time I write and I'm more grounded than with anything else that I do. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, I, I love that quote. I didn't know that was from her. There is, there's an, I think there's someone from a similar era, might have been Hemingway, who said, um, when people say they want to write a book, what they really mean is they want to have written a book, which is a kind of a similar thought, you know, because there's a, there's a big gap between wanting to write a book and having a written book. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, the reward often is, um, yes, definitely finishing is, is amazing. But certainly a lot of the time, it's also understanding. I get a lot of understanding from, I make sense of my world from, from writing. Whatever the reward is for you, I'm conscious that I'm on the first slide and it's already 20 to 8. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hammer on through. Um, the, what, this, what this is coming to is a short discussion about purpose, really, because what you're all kind of more or less confirming for me um, in your answers, and, and, I, and I'm wanting you to kind of reflect on this for yourself if you haven't already, is that you have a purpose in writing, um, that you feel called to it, yeah? It calls you. And it's so, it's, it's, um, it's a process that, uh, well, there's another great quote that I've used hundreds of times over the years, and I love it so much, uh, to do with um, your art and your music and whatever your artistic expression is, is that if you don't let it out or get it out, it beats you bloody inside. Uh, Tanya's nodding, I'm sure she must have heard me say that one before. <laughs> I've used it often. Um, and uh, I certainly find that uh, if I don't get it out, if I don't do this thing that I'm feeling so compelled to do in terms of my art, then it beats me up uh, until I've done it because it's a huge part of my personal expression that this is, this is who I am. Um, so what I want to talk about a little bit is, uh, is this topic of purpose. Um, uh, and um, I, well, I guess that's, I've just answered that really. What happens if you don't answer the call? Maybe if anyone's got an answer to that, um, I've used the expression, it beats you bloody inside. Anyone else got another kind of thing about that? What happens if you don't do it? I think I, it, I, oh, sorry. Oh, thank you, Tanya. I think one of the sorriest or one of the saddest words in the English language is regret. And yeah. I do not want to have regrets about my writing. Mm. I want, you know, however good, however bad, however raw it is, I want to get it out so that yeah. I, can, I can produce what needs to be said. Cool. Yeah. Tanya? So I, I, it's a bit crude, but what it, what it comes up in oh, is... Shameless is, plug. I've just changed <laughs> slides. Carry on. Um, <laughs> is, is feeling constipated. Yeah. It's like but, a spiritual, creative constipation. And so I think yeah. that then in, the, you know, there's so much particularly today about being in the moment. Yeah. But if you're not getting out some of the stuff that needs to get out. If you're not getting it in whatever medium works, whether it's writing or art or music or whatever it is, mm. I think that you are not then able to be present because it's your cloud, your well, constant, you're constipated inside. It's like you can't get through. So people yeah. are, saying, you're not being present, you're actually being. You know, you're only, they're only getting 25 or 50 percent of you instead of sure. because you're not getting what needs to get out. Sure. So um, I don't know. I know that some of you know that this is this is the, an area that I've talked a lot about and written about. Um, and but some of you may not know that this is an area of, of some expertise, I will say, uh, um, on my part. <laughs> Um, and, and two books uh, on this topic, and, and some of you may have even, even read them. Um, the first one, um, The Elements of Purpose, is just talking about what I think purpose is. Um, it's, I don't think it's as, a simple topic. I think it's quite a complex topic. Um, I think it's intensely interesting, 
And I wish that they taught whole courses on this from, you know, grade school on up to high school and, and university, because uh, we're completely lacking in an, in an understanding of this. Um, and the second book, um, Purpose, which is actually called Purpose 2, but you can't see it because my thing's over there, Purpose 2, uh, Making Sure Your Purpose Finds You, um, is actually considerably larger and a lot more detailed and goes into a lot more um, practicalities about putting yourself in the right kind of position um, that your purpose finds you, if you don't already know what it is, you're a lot of you relatively got a lot of clarity on this. Um, and, and then it goes into some of the things that you need to do to get out of your own way and so on. I'm gonna cover some of that very briefly today, um, bits that I think are, are relevant to this area of, of writing. Um, so in terms of what I think the, uh, the parts of purpose are, these are the things that I talk about in the first book, that you do have a purpose, that you have different parts to it. There's a part of your purpose that is unchanging. Um, there's a part that's changing. A big part of purpose is that it is specifically there to make a difference. And some of you talked about that. Um, you have a responsibility to assist others with their purpose. Um, there's a whole... Um, you will have obstacles to your purpose, and there are some that we all have. Um, and the obstacles are your lessons. These are your life lessons. Uh, your purpose is generally something that you're quite passionate about. It doesn't necessarily start that way. Um, and the final one, which is kind of obscure, uh, which is that you are already living um, your purpose as soon as you decide to, basically. That's incredibly scant overview. There's obviously more depth in, in the book, but the things that I wanted to point out in particular, that it is about making a difference. Um, whether it's a non-fiction that's going to um, change the way we think about the world, or whether it's a fiction that brings us into our own hearts and minds in, in a new experience, all of those are things that change people. We all have books that changed our worlds. Yeah, so somebody made a difference for us there. And we all have obstacles. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, the arts are one of the greatest contributions in terms when it comes to making a difference. I think artistic expression is one of the biggest differences that we can make. Okay, so this is where we're getting into some of the nitty gritty. Um, so ego is our biggest, one of our biggest obstacles. I've got loads of notes on this. You can make notes if you want. I'm going to put my notes together and you will have that as well. Um, and obviously you'll have the video that you can listen to again. Um, most of this does actually come from the books too. So, you know, you could just read the books. <laughs> I think if you have um, Kindle Unlimited, uh, is it Kindle Unlimited? They're both free actually, um, to download on Kindle Unlimited. Um, so in terms of ego, what I'm meaning, um, I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, what I'm meaning uh, is that part of ourselves that um, uh, responds defensively. Okay, so there's lots of different understandings of the ego. Uh, and, and if you've studied psychology, you'll be aware of different different. Um, different models around this. But uh, what I'm referring to is that part of us that gets in the way of allowing us to have what we want. Um, so it sees, uh, it sees threats um, and it responds defensively. Um, it thinks its job is to protect us and, in, and it, it does it by often limiting um, uh, the things that we want to actually achieve and, and acting uh, putting up obstacles, in particular um, our personal growth. And writing is a huge area of personal growth. Um, if you don't think writing is going to change you, well, <laughs> think again. Um, so ego is something that um, it blocks our desire for personal change and growth. Uh, and it blocks us from receiving the things that we want to receive. And it will do that by telling us that we're no good at it, that we're never going to be any good at it, all those kinds of rubbish things. Uh, that, that you um, well and truly know, know all about. Um, uh, what else do I want to say about that? I, 
think I'm going to leave that at that. Um, I think uh, this next um, point is kind of, um, it kind of follows on quite neatly, actually, um, that one of the things that um, we're going to have to do in order to um, bring our purpose into reality is to let go of some of the things that we think we are. Um, and so if we, th and, if, and also, of course, some of the things that we think we're not. Um, so, um, if, you know, for some reason, we don't expect in our lives to have to let go of things, but we do need to um, and, and rewrite the script of who we are and who we want to be. Declutter is a really practical one. I don't know about you, but I do need to um, be able to have everything sorted around me in order to be able to sit and write. I have deliberately made my life extremely simple in order to be able to write. Um, I don't have a, um, a proper job. I don't live in a proper house. I don't actually have a house. Um, I, uh, I live mostly out of a suitcase. Um, and I don't, I have almost no bills that I have to pay. So um, I have, and all of my furniture and everything, almost everything I've ever owned is in storage. Uh, and, and I've set my life up that way specifically so I can do what I'm doing. That's an extreme version. <laughs> um, but I'm sure most of you will find that uh, you need to have things reasonably tidy. The part of the problem with this, of course, is we can get into a sort of pathological decluttering where we have to have everything so tidy that um, we never get time to, to sit and write. So you need to obviously find, find a balance there. Um, focusing on, on what we want and not what we don't have um, is, is a, a very straightforward, but very, very difficult to, um, to attain. If what you want is to have written a book, as, as <laughs> Dorothy Parker has said, then that is what you need to focus on, not on what you don't have. This is simple kind of law of attraction stuff. I'm sure that most of you have seen all of this and heard all of this. Um, but it, these, these are things that you will always have to come back to if, uh, when it comes to manifesting your purpose, which is the big picture version of who you are and want to be. It's the thing that's calling you and driving you. So, uh, you know, these are things that you know. You all know all of these things. But I want you to put them into the context of you as a writer um, and as, as a means of grappling with the ways in which you get in your own way. Yeah? Um, Self-sabotage, um, again, I mean, I mean, these are all very, very similar, aren't they? Self-sabotage is uh, uh, when we know we want something and we set about um, making sure that it doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, or we know how to get what we want, but we do the opposite. Um, or, or simply knowing what we need to do to improve a situation, but just not doing it. Um, and, and obviously procrastination comes in here. Um, procrastination is a really interesting thing. Um, I, I read um, some years ago this definition of, or explanation of procrastination that really started to change the way um, I dealt with my own procrastination, which is that um, procrastinate, this is a form of self-sabotage. Self, self procrastination is what occurs in between intention and action. And the problem is in not closing the space between the two. Yeah, so we make excuses to justify um, delaying and, and therefore sabotaging our intention. And what we need to do is close the gap between intention and action. When I looked at it that way, it helped me to shift my own procrastination. Um, quite markedly in quite a short space of time. I tend now not to procrastinate very much, and I was probably the queen of procrastination. Probably many of you might think you're the queen of procrastination, but it was me. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. Draw a line on a, on a piece of paper and put intention at one end and action at the other end. 
and see that line as just being something that you need to shorten. It's a very, very interesting thing. And, and I, um, I suggest you experiment with that this week and keep that in your mind. Just have that piece of paper up on the fridge um, with a couple of magnets or, or on your computer on a post-it note with a line with intention at one end and action at the other end. And see if you can um, uh, reduce the length of your own line. Yeah, it's a much um, easier way to look at procrastination than um, beating yourself up over um, being, I don't know, irresponsible or, or not good enough to actually get on with it. You, you know, we, we tend to beat ourselves up over procrastination. Just turn it into something very left-brained, that it's a line that you just need to shorten. Um, and fear. I, I'm not. Um, I'm not a big um, uh, fan of the idea of fear of failure, um, but uh, I understand that it, that it, it exists for some people. I, I, I think it's it's a little bit new agey the idea of fear of failure. Um, I think there's fear of embarrassment. Um, I think there's fear of rejection. Um, I think there's um, well, there's fear of all kinds of different things. Um, but uh, yeah, um, the thing is for you to examine what it is that you're afraid of uh, in terms of getting on and making this happen. That may be one element of your procrastination. So you can see how all of these things very much overlap, yeah? And I think that they, are, um, they become an important um, list of things to ponder when you know that you're... Um, getting in your own way and you're not sitting down to write. Uh, so, but don't ponder them for too long. <laughs> okay. Um, so giving your purpose a chance. Now, this is, uh, this is a big part of what, um, what I think purpose is about. Uh, I talk about purpose as being a spiritual process that has nothing to do with religion doesn't have anything to do with God. It has simply to do with the idea that I believe we have a spiritual part to ourselves, just as we have an emotional part and a physical part and a mental and intellectual part. Um, and we seek fulfillment in these different parts to different degrees. Um, we have an artistic part. Um, so if, if we, um, or perhaps more, um, we might call it an aesthetic, an aesthetic self. Um, which seeks um, pleasure in music and, and art, for example. Um, in the uh, Olympics, in the tennis today, we see the ultimate in, in, um, in the uh, achievement of people's physical selves. Um, so purpose and finding our purpose and giving life to our purpose is, the, uh, is what our spiritual part of us craves. Our spiritual part of us craves meaning uh, and our purpose is what gives us meaning. It's, uh, it's, it's what all of you talked about today in terms of creating connection, um, telling your stories, and, and it's the thing that you're compelled to do. So uh, I see it as being very spiritual and therefore uh, I believe that in order to breathe a lot more life into your purpose and into your creativity as well. And in many of the aspects of writing is to connect with spirit. Now you can do this in all manner of different ways. And many of you will do this. Some of you won't do it at all. It may be that you do it by walking in nature. It may be that you do it um, through prayer. Uh, I am a firm believer in meditation and uh, I cannot emphasize enough the enormous value of meditating every day, preferably twice a day, even if it's for only 10 minutes. Um, and the outcomes from that are enormous. Uh, in particular, you will reduce the extent of your own procrastination. You will um, increase uh, the, um, your creative flow you will literally have more ideas uh, and, and you will be able to put yourself 
into that flow when you're writing so that you won't put obstacles in, in your place to actually sitting down and writing. And when you're writing, it will all flow a lot more easily. Now, it's not always going to happen, but it's going to have a lot better chance with that connection if you can, if you can create that connection in your daily life. One of the things that um, I also talk about a great deal, and, and I'm pretty sure Tanya will have heard me talk about this because um, we spent some time last year talking about her project, uh, which is that the universe wants to play. Um, now, what I mean by that is um, I talk about this in regard to having a big goal. N now, writing a book is a big goal, okay? When you set yourself a big goal, something that is um, either very difficult or maybe even almost impossible for you to achieve, then uh, the universe is more likely to, to stump up and play ball with you. If you don't set a big goal, um, then it's going to, oh, you, you don't need my help. I'm not going to be there for you. Now, I've seen this happen so many times. <laughs> I, can, I cannot, uh, cannot overemphasize how, um, how amazing it is, really. Um, if you have a, a, so to make your goal of your book bigger, this is what I want you to do. Because at the moment, probably not very many of you have an actual time limit that you've put on yourself to completing your task of writing your book. So I'm going to ask you to um, put some serious thought into that um, over the next week. Or even, you know, while we're here, if you feel compelled to, put a time limit on it and say, I'm going to finish the writing this book within the next two months. Because that's really, really difficult. <laughs> because the more difficult it is, the more likely the universe is going to surround you and support you to make that happen. If you say, well, you know, I think I'd probably like to have, you know, published my first book by the end of next year, that's not that hard. It's a whole lot less hard than saying, I want to um, have written my book. I want to have my first draft done in two months. So have a think about that. But um, I can tell you that uh, when you set a bigger goal, the universe will stump up for you. Um, ask, ask for assistance. That can mean asking me, it can mean asking your guides, uh, it can be asking God, it can be asking the universe, it could be asking your friends, it could be asking whoever you need to ask for whatever kind of help you need in order to make your purpose uh, come alive for you. And we're saying here that your purpose is writing and writing a book, yeah. Calling on the muse. Now, here's a really lovely ritual, and I really would like to recommend that you create a little bit of a ritual around your writing. Um, a lot of people will do this anyway, but um, if you don't, uh, here's an idea for you. Before you start writing, let's say you've organized a particular time of day that you're going to write, and we're going to get to that <laughs> if you don't already do that. Um, and uh, I'm going to put your faces on because I find it really hard to just talk to myself. There we go. That's better. <laughs> um, you, you might have a little corner of your house where you've got candle or crystals or whatever. You may not. You can have that if you want, if it makes a difference. Um, sometimes I have that. Sometimes I don't. But create this little habit for yourself whether you're sitting down with a, um, on, a, on the sofa with a pen in your hand and a journal or whether you're sitting at, um, uh, at your desk with your computer. Sit there, make sure everyone's out of the way and the doors are closed and all the rest of it. Close your eyes. And if you have been a meditator, you will find this, um, you know, a fairly simple and straightforward thing to do. But if you haven't been, sit there and call on the universe, the light, God, the writing muse, uh, the great God of writing, whatever you want to call it that you think is going to bring you um, uh, the inspiration that you would like to have. 
So you ask for that assistance to come. And, uh, you know, you need to put yourself into a kind of a, a, a meditative pose. Uh, and if you have a form of meditate, I don't want to kind of tell you how to meditate in this, um, in this particular um, lesson. I'm assuming that many of you have done that um, before. Uh, if not, um, I would say that uh, probably the easiest thing to think about, if you've never meditated before, the easiest thing to think about when you close, when you close your eyes is your own breathing. And just think about breathing in and out and put your attention on your breathing in and out. And as you're doing that, ask for assistance for your writing. So you create a little bit of a, a ritual around your writing. You will find a way that feels good for you and works for you. And then you start to write. And when you've finished your writing, take a moment to thank whoever it was, whatever it was that brought whatever inspiration you had to you or whatever assistance came to you during that time. If this is, I think this is a really important little ritual. Um, and I know people that do it, you know, do swear by the importance of putting themselves in a slightly different space by doing this. Okay. Okay. So what I want you to do, uh, and I, I really, can, I'm going to put this PowerPoint up in the group. Can I recommend that you download this PowerPoint to your computer and put it on your desktop and look, there's not that many slides in this. There's only about eight, six or eight or something, I think. Please try and look through it several times during the course of the next week and think about these different things that I've said to you because a lot of these, will, a lot of things will, will come up for you um, from looking at this about what you do to get in your own way and how you can create um, that flow much more easily. Yeah. Before we go into the habits and, and goals, has anyone got anything they want to mention about any of that? Nothing comes to mind. Um, hopefully that means you're kind of pondering it, which is great. I hope it's, I hope it's been um, something to get you thinking. What I would like you to do now, and I want you to make a commitment to it now, and I want you to stick to it, this commitment for the rest of this week, and then I'm going to ask you about it. People come and do these courses because they want to be held accountable, so I'm going to hold you accountable. <laughs> I know you come to learn things as well, but there's always that element of accountability that, um, that you're looking for. So what is the writing habit that you are going to create and stick to every day for the rest of this week until next Sunday when we meet again. And I'm going to exit that and open that back up. And Jackie, tell me what's your habit that you're going to and goal that you're going to create for the week. Hang on, I'm going to unmute you. Got it. I'm thinking sort of two hours a day. I don't know if that's enough or if that's too much initially, but just to sit in the chair and stay there for two hours would be a big plus. Yep. And is that like a morning, evening, or how does that work for you? Do you do it at home? Do you go to a, do you go to a cafe? How does it work? Um, mornings is better for me. I'm an early riser. I'm generally up by 5.30, 6 a.m. So it's perfect. And I know that's when I should be doing this stuff, but that's when I go out to the garden and start potting plants. Right. And have you got interruptions in your house that are going to interfere with your two hours in the week? Me. No interruptions. <laughs> You'll be the envy of at least a couple of other people here, I'm sure. <laughs> I know Tanya's got two boys, I think, right? So, yeah. So, Jackie, two hours a day. Starting yeah. tomorrow? Yes. So yes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's seven days until we meet again. And so so you're going to do two hours when you get up. You're not yeah. going to move from the chair. No, just for coffee. 
just for your coffee. Just you don't have too many coffees, though. I think sit down with the coffee to start with. You know, yes. everything. I'm carrying my coffee good. after the two hours is up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, I think that's that's good. That's good. Unless you're really desperate for your second coffee. Yeah. Um, cool. And so, if you manage to do that, or more, so write down each day how long you did or how well you did. You know, and um, you might do more. You might end up being there for the whole day. That's fine. Okay. If you end up being there for the whole day tomorrow, that does not excuse you from doing two hours the next day and the next day and the next day. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about a habit. Okay. Yes. Cool. Right. Okay. Who's, okay. who's next? Who's going to come up with one? I, uh, I actually was thinking exactly the same thing. What was the lady's name that just spoke before me? That was Jackie. I was thinking exactly the same thing. Two hours? Two hours in the morning. Two hours in the morning. Okay, so Kelly's for two hours in the morning. And have you got distractions in your house? Only ones I create. Okay. <laughs> Good. Good. And what are you going to do about those distractions that you create for yourself? Oh, I don't know. Maybe put a, a curtain between me and my dish, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think I'll just I'll go out onto the deck where it's quiet. Okay. And or do the dishes tonight before you go to bed, or you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. I think, I think if I just sit down in the mornings and spend two hours writing. Okay. Cool. And so, are you writing? Um, you're writing with your pen or your laptop or your. Well, I I've got to start with my pen and just write kind of an outline or key challenges or something because I'm, I'm actually when I get onto my laptop I'm writing two different things sure one is one is kind of a factual memoir and the other part of it is the other part of it is this very personal memoir of you know that's that's getting tied up into it I think if I'm going to get both of them together I need to ask this sit with that idea of incorporating the two things together and just sure. scribble until something kind of gels. Yeah. So I think I got to start with the pen. Sure. I think when you've got, um, when you've got timelines, you do have to plot things out. Definitely. Um, I mean, any fiction actually you've got to plot out. Um, cool. Okay. So the same applies for you. You know, if you spend the whole day writing, it doesn't excuse you from doing two hours the next morning. Kelly, two hours every day. So She's already thinking that. Okay, Tanya. <laughs> so um, I, I think two hours would be really phenomenal, but that's not going to happen in my life. Um, so I'm going to go for um, a half an hour in the morning and a half an hour at night. Cool. Um, so the half an hour will be up before I'll get up, make a cup of coffee, let the dog out. And then before I wake up the kids. And then at night when my youngest has gone to bed and then my older is just plugged in to his whatever cool. it is he's up to, then I usually have a bit of time and I'll just sort of schedule it out. Right. Uh, so managing the offspring. Cool. So I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm working sort of before and after. Yep. Um, yep. That'll give me the best. And then during the day I can take, I can cook on things and pull things yeah, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, absolutely. And, and so during the day when you're doing other things and working and all the rest of it, no, have a notepad still yeah, because it's, I do. It's, yeah, cool. Excellent. Okay. Right. Suzanne. So um, what she said, I don't right now have two hours a day. Um, I can probably do 30 minutes to an hour. Um, the biggest distraction I've got in my house is I happen to have a husband who I really, really like and enjoy spending time with. And so, and I guess I'm in the minority, um, but I like to come home after a long day and I think I'll just spend a few minutes, have a glass of wine and deconstruct the day. And before I know it, it's two hours have gone by. So I need to have discipline and he supports me thoroughly in going in 
my office and closing the door and just doing what I need to do. Um, so I will commit to at least 30 minutes, if not an hour per day. And is it in the morning or the evening? I am so not a morning person. It will be the evening. Right. Nice dog. Hello. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I also have two German shepherds and they're somewhat distracting. Yeah, yeah, they can be. Mine's finally passed out on the sofa after sticking his nose in my face every half hour. Um, okay, that's good. So uh, every day for the next seven, seven days. Cool. Yes. Are you going to do it this evening? Yes. Good. So that starts from this evening. The same for you, Tanya, starts from this evening. Okay. Because anyway, it's still the day there. We're already in the evening over here. Okay, uh, good. That's you sorted. Who's next? Pat. I will, I'll do it in the morning before work and I can commit to 45 minutes because I'm also um, training for a half Ironman. So, wow. Yeah, 45 minutes of writing, 45 minutes of exercise or an hour, depending. I, I get up at an ungodly hour, but the writing has to happen in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us would probably like to actually commit to 45 minutes of exercise at the same time. But anyway, well done. We're impressed. <laughs> well, it's either that or take psychotropics. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, London. Yeah, um, I've been listening. It's been really helpful. Um, I'm going to aim, I think, definitely for one hour. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yep. Um, I'd like to do more, but I, I think one is realistic. Um, and it will, I will aim for it to be in the morning. But like you have been explain, explaining, I have work to do to declutter my schedule. <laughs> and I just have, um, and sometimes I, I like this coming week, I, I have a health appointment. I can't, I can't not do. So I have to, it's what's important is to get the hour in and not yep. say also that I will always do it at nine o'clock in the morning or something like that. Sure. Or, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, I'm going to have to do a fit in some, of what I what you were talking about it's the decluttering the setting up the space but not let that be pro procrastination against writing yeah indeed indeed so I think yeah, I can report back on the one hour a day but it's also the bigger setting up um, whereabouts are you London and um, I'm living in the Netherlands oh right but you're English I'm English yes So it's even later for you. Yes, um, but it's yeah. I the way you you set out the time list, you know, it's one hour different time difference from people in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, and Jan, I think we just got you to do. Jan, are you there? I am here. Hi. Um, so yes, I did definitely resonate with your comment about the decluttering. I need to do that and, and create just a specific space. It'll be at night. I have a parrot, very noisy parrot, but she goes to sleep at eight o'clock. Okay. So that'll how long? down. Um, you know, it'll probably be a couple of different separate hours, but you know, I'll see how it goes. I guess I'm for sure. I could say two hours. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, but I haven't sat down think. the whole time this has been going on, so sitting is hard for me. I have some real issues with my back. So that's <laughs> maybe I'll set up a place where I could stand up and type. That might work. That's how um, Ernest Hemingway typed, standing up. Sure. Yeah, I don't know why, but he always did. Yeah, he had a, he had an old-fashioned typewriter on top of a um, chest of drawers, and he stood and typed. Yeah. Hmm. I think I'll look up a picture of that. Thank you. There you go. 
<laughs> whatever works. All right. Okay. So um, I don't know if anybody did uh, the homework from last week. One person sent me, actually, I think that was you, wasn't it, Jan? Sent me the thing, but you sent it upside down. But anyway, <laughs> um, I did upload from that editing thing. I did upload my version of the editing uh, into the um, lesson um, one unit within the group. Um, so when you go into the Facebook group, there's um, a menu. I don't know. I can't, don't know how you see it on your phone, but at any rate, you can. I think you have to go up to the. If you're looking at, at Facebook on your phone, you have to go up to the top right-hand corner to the little I. But if you look on your laptop or your iPad or your computer. Uh, down the left hand side of the screen there's a bunch there's menu items like members and posts and photos and blah 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 there's one called units uh, and if you click on that then what you eventually see is unit one two three which is each of these weeks so at the moment unit one has got last week's powerpoint the link to the video recording um, and the word document that i uploaded um, which was an opportunity for you to edit that document based on the things that we talked about last week. I've now also uploaded my edited version. There's, um, there'll potentially be lots of differences and that's okay. Um, I've tried to put in some explanations for why I did the things I did. Um, have a scan of that and, and just, you know, it's not all black and white. Um, it's not absolutely you know right and wrong um but have a look at it and i think you'll get a feel and that might be an exercise that we do again because i think it's quite useful when we're at that kind of micro level of of writing um i will upload this the powerpoint that i've just showed you um into the group i want you to download it and put it on your desktop or your ipad or whatever and look at it several times and think through again some of those things that we've talked about and and i'm glad that it's been useful for you to think about the things that um get in your way and the importance of this process of your purpose to you and how rewarding it is and keep that you know, very much at the forefront of your mind. This is part of who you are. It's becoming a big part of who you are. It's now a massive part of who I am. Uh, but it's taken me years to put myself into this place where I now call myself a writer before I call myself anything else. You know, um, yeah, writers write. So you have to write in order to call yourself a writer. Uh, and I'll look forward to, and I will also obviously post the link to this recording, and I will look forward to holding you accountable. I might even, you know, do that during the week. I might tag you in the group and say, hey, Tanya, done your hour today? Yeah. Hey, Pat, how's the exercise going? So we'll just see. So, look, thank you for being here. Um, I'm sorry we got a bit late started again. We're going to blame the tennis for that. Um, and uh, I hope you all have a great week. And I will talk to you all again soon. Feel free, as I said last week, as I'll say this again because there's some new people. Um, if there is anything that you are working on at the moment that you would like me to take a look at, um, I'm happy to have a brief look. Uh, um, most of you know I charge to do a whole kind of review of your, your work for you and, and obviously to do a full edit. Um, but because you're on the course, I'm happy to take a look at, um, a brief look at what you're doing. Um, if you've got any specific questions about what you're doing, like how do I get my head around blah, blah, blah when I'm writing this kind of a story or something, um, I'm happy to have those kinds of conversations too. It's really great if you've got any of those kinds of questions to actually write them on a post in the group because someone else is bound to have the same question. Or if they don't, they wish, you know, that they might suddenly realise they had that question when they see that you've got it. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, anything you want to ask anytime. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go and see who won the cricket now. <laughs> hopefully New Zealand, and I'll talk to you uh, next week. If anyone wants to come in tomorrow morning, um, you're all mostly American apart from Jackie in London, so it'll be the middle of the night. 
but I do an, a session tomorrow morning to allow the New Zealander, not me, the other New Zealander, to participate because uh, the timing isn't good. So I've got that information in the group. If you want to join a second time in the morning, you'd be really welcome to keep her and me company. Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. And Thank you. Uh, I'll talk Thank you. What Thanks. is the code for the Monday meeting? Uh, What's the code for the Monday meeting? The code for the Monday meeting is, uh, well, it'll be the middle of the night for you, Kelly. Oh, will it? Yeah, yeah. It's because, so that, that's why it's really hard if you've got people in every corner of the world to create one meeting time. Um, so it's at, what time is it at, Jackie? It's 8 a.m. at our time, um, which means uh, depending on which time zone you're in, Kelly, it would be 3 a.m. New York time. Oh, no, I'm not in New York. I'm way west of there. But... Okay, so if you're in California, it will be midnight. Okay. So, you know, but it, it's up in the group. It's up in the group. Um, and it was also on the email that I sent today. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cheers, everybody.